The Star UI series of mods for Starfield by MAR98A4F2 is probably the best thing produced by the modding community so far. It makes so many quality of life changes, they really should be on everyone's must have list. I have more good news, it just keeps getting better. M8R98A4F2 has now released the easiest way to set up the mods the way you want, with the Star UI Configurator. We'll go through the mod, how it works, do installation and setup with Mod Organizer 2, and run through some of the features. Hey everyone, it's Cal from Dirty Weasel, and before we get started on the configurator, let's talk briefly about the Star UI series of mods. All these mods can be attained on the Starfield Nexus, and we're going to start with what came out first, and that would be the Star UI inventory, mod number 773. It is basically going to overhaul the UI system for the inventory. It's going to compact things down, it will also add new columns, and change colors and do a bunch of different things for you. Star UI HUD was next up. It is mod number 3444. It's going to change the way you look at the world outside of your user interface while in the different inventory menus. So it's highly configurable. You can go through all the any files and it has a lot of choices for you. The most recent addition to Star UI was for the workbench and it's mod number 4966. Once again, changes the way things work entirely for the Workbench user interfaces and can be configured in the any files. I just want to look at the mods individually and kind of give you an idea of what installation is like this. We'll just touch on Workbench since it's the most recent. And to get in, give you an idea of what's going on here, we'll just reinstall it so you can see the faux mod that pops up. And you'll have choices. We're of course using Mod Organizer 2, but you have options for Vortex, and it does make a change as far as where things are installed. Mod Organizer 2 is much more agnostic, so it makes actually installation and deployment of the mods much easier. So in our case, you would select Mod Organizer 2, and then each of the mods, all inventory, HUD, and workbench, have different presets. And you can choose whichever one fits the best for you. We'll just choose Extended in this point and click Next and then you can finish install. Now, to give you an idea of what's going on in here, let's open it up and you can see the file tree. Under interface, you're gonna have the any file that you selected. Remember we chose a vanilla expanded on this, so that is going to be the settings inside of the Star UI workbench. But all of your presets are included up here in the Star UI workbench presets. It'll tell you how to use it if you want to look at the text file. And then you can look at all the different settings for all the different presets. So how that would work in the past, if we open it up into Explorer, go to Interface, go ahead and open the Star UI Workbench Default.ini, and we'll use Notepad++ for this, you can make all the different changes inside of your text editor for the any file. And in the past, I kind of went through and compared it to Vanilla and Hoarder and looked at all the different setting changes and kind of came up with my own way of doing things. The configurator will get rid of all those different things. So you're not going to need to go through and edit the different any files. And now that brings us to the Star UI Configurator Nexus page. It is mod number 5467, once again, done by the same mod author. And when you come down and read this stuff, you will see Configurator for Star UI Mods. Easily configure all settings with a well-aligned and easy-to-use interface. Provides help text, sliders, drop-downs, toggle switchers, and specialized column picker and color picker widgets to make individualizing your Star UI mod in ease. And it does! And I did test it out and it worked pretty well. But basically, I would suggest you read all of the information. We're going to go through some of the basics here, but you need to understand what's going on here. And I want you to read all this stuff. And that's always good advice for any mod that you're installing. And one that is complex as this, you need to understand what's going on. But we'll kind of touch on it here. Over in the files, you'll see the, the Star UI configurator. You can go ahead and download with your mod manager of choice. I do not recommend you do a manual download of this and then install it manually inside the main directory for Starfield. Just a bad idea in general. It's had a couple changes, but we're at now version 1.1 as of the making of this video. 
So download it with your mod manager of choice. We are using Mod Organizer 2, and you can see I have it right here. You have a couple choices when it comes to installation. And what I found is that it doesn't matter where you install it, but for sanity's sake, I would suggest, and my star UIs are basically by chronological order, but it doesn't make a difference. There are no overwrites there. I wanted to install it right after the most recent version that we have, Star UI Workbench. And this is the faux mod that you're going to get with it. So once again, you're going to see a similar sort of thing. You're going to have Vortex and Mod Organizer 2. You click Next, and that's all there is to it. And that's going to send the files to the correct location, but because Mod Organizer 2 is all virtual, it's pretty easy. So go ahead and click to install. You'll click on it and see what's inside. You have Interface is empty, and this will become very important. And then you have the Star UI Configurator, and it doesn't really have much here. These are all JSON files. Now, in the instructions, it's saying that you must have the different components you want to manage with the Configurator already pre-installed, because the Configurator will start looking for that information. What that means is that it's going to look in your Data tab for the different mod any and JSON files associated with Star UI Inventory, Star UI HUD, and Star UI Workbench. Inside of Mod Organizer, that means over here in your Data tab. If you go to Interface, you'll see Star UI HUD presets, Star UI Inventory presets, Star UI Workbench layouts, and Workbench presets. And then farther down, you can see all the default any. Here's one for Star UI HUD, Star UI Inventory, and Star UI Workbench. And those are the default any files that you selected when installing Star UI Inventory, HUD, and Workbench. And it's going to be looking for those things, all the JSON files and all the different any files. As far as running the configurator, it's under here in Start. And since we're using Mod Organizer, this will apply in general terms for Vortex as well. You're going to need to add an executable that will point to the star UI configurator dot bat. Let's get back into Mod Organizer and show you what I'm talking about. As you know, you're going to be running any executables in Mod Organizer 2 through the startup menu on the right hand side at the very top. You can see I have it currently set at SFSE. Then you have Starfield and the Virtual Explorer. To add a new executable, go over here to the gear icon, click on that, and you can see the same executables in the drop down for the right. You have SFSE, Starfield, and the Explorer Virtual Folder. We are going to add a new one. So the plus icon right here, go ahead and click on that, and that's going to add a new executable, and you can choose from File. So you're going to start go looking for that .bat file, and in Mod Organizer 2, I keep mine in my common, but it may change for wherever you're at. And I'm going to go down to where my Mod Organizer 2 for Starfield is located. You can see it's MO2 Starfield Beta, because I am using Beta 11, I think it's up to 13 now. But I'm using Beta 11. This will not change for later Beta versions. Open that up, and you're going to go down to Mods. And we are going to look for the Star UI Configurator. Double click that to open it up. And there's your star UI configurator dot bat file. You want to highlight it and click open. And that's going to give the name of the executable. It's going to show you where it's starting and you can do other things here, but it will work no matter what happens. You don't need to use an hiding user interface during these things. Just go ahead and press apply and press OK. So now you have four in your modify executables and you'll have a new executable in your drop down menu on the right upper side for star ui configurator and you're all set to go so you basically need to make sure the star ui mods that you want to adjust or configure are active in your profile and that the star ui configurator is active as well and what's going to happen is when you start it up it's going to look for those files i mentioned the json and the dot any files so we go ahead and select Star UI Configurator and run it. And you're meet with this nice little interface. And I quite like it. It's very pretty until they did some work on this. We'll start here at the bottom right. Show startup log. 
And in this log, you can see detected start from inside the Starfield data folder. And that's exactly what Mod Organizer does. It looks at the data folder and then runs the executable. You can see it found all the configuration files for a HUD inventory and workbench. And then it also found the any files for HUD inventory and workbench. So that is perfect. It's ready to go. In the upper right hand side, you have accessibility mode. You can either click it on to see a little more easier to see black and white version, or you can go back to the nice pretty version you have here. Each of these different mods will be highlighted in the color if it's installed. If you do not have, let's say, Star UI HUD installed inside your left pane, in your left pane of Mod Organizer over here, this will be grayed out. You will not have options to make any changes. The same thing goes with Star UI Inventory or Star UI Workbench. Let's go ahead and open the first one, and we're going to go by chronological order. We're going to look at the Star UI Inventory first to get to be an idea of what's happening here. You can see the main splash screen, then you have the category list. And you will have a number of off and on buttons for different factors of the things. And each one as you go over will have a handy tooltip at the bottom here, down here, for what it is. So you'll know exactly what you're doing. Show it a category slide bar on the left in the inventory, on and off buttons. You can set the font size. You can do a bunch of different things. And there, quite frankly, there's a whole lot here that is too much for me to go over, but I want to point out kind of what the things you can do. You can change the fonts, you can change the colors, and I will point out that these are RGB colors and not HTML colors. There are a number of web applications that you can pre-pick how to change the color and then use the three-digit codes for the first, second, and third entries to get the color you want. Or you can click on the color itself and then change the red, green, and blue to the color you wish. You can also change the opacity, that's alpha. If you press OK, it'll change the color. And we're going to press cancel for right now because we're going to get back to what happens when you make any changes. Mass transfer, more options, quality of life, different options here. Columns, this is one of the things I wanted to point out to you, is you have different options off and on buttons for the different functions that it does and will give you the tooltips. And most commonly, you'll be playing with the different columns inside of the different categories inside of Star UI for inventory. And I want to point something out to you. When you come down to weapons and you hit select, you'll see click buttons that you can turn on and off for the different category columns that will appear inside the inventory menu. The only one I've added for explanation's sake is the number of ammo rounds. That is normally off by default. I have it on. So you know that the Star UI configurator is reading your existing dot any files. This is my first clue that it that's how it's working. It is reading the dot any files you currently have for any changes. If you want to push things up and down and change the order of the columns that appear left to right, you have damage, DPS, mass value, value per mass, ammo and ammo rounds. If I wanted to move my ammo up or down, let's say, move it up, you would click the arrows and you'll change the order from left to right of the columns as they appear. I'm gonna press cancel on that because we'll get back to what happens with each one. So that's kind of how this works. And each of them in turn will have more and more settings that you can go through and do different things with. Now let's talk about making the changes and what happens within Mod Organizer 2. So let's go ahead and change one thing in each of the mods, one thing in Star UI HUD, one thing in Star UI Inventory, and one thing in the Workbench. Let's go back in the settings and we're going to turn on loot meter because that's the one I want to change the most. I don't like this little indicator right here, this green bar that shows value of things. I like having a much smaller indicator. So we're going to turn off Enable loot meter even though it says Meeber here. Go ahead and click Off, and you'll go ahead and see that you currently have no user settings in the any file create user settings any file. It will give you the directions on where it's going to be putting it. However, in Mono Organizer 2, it's not going to be putting it inside your documents. It will be dropping it into your overwrite folder. In Mod Organizer 2, is the overwrite is down here at the bottom. And this is anytime that something's generated 
inside of Mod Organizer through either the game, this is where your all your photos will go if you're using Mod Organizer, or any of your executables, anytime a new file is generated, it will be put into your overwrite. This is a very important feature I want to point out to you. So let's go back into this. We want that off. We say OK. It's not going to be putting it into our documents. It's going to be putting it into our overwrite folder. Go ahead and press OK. So we've now made a change to the star UI HUD. Let's change something in the inventory. Uh, let's do instant open and close. We'll turn that on. Once again, it's saying that you don't have anything for the star UI inventory. Any file, do you want us to create it? Same thing. Doesn't go into documents. It's going to your overwrite folder. Press OK. And we'll change it into workbench. We'll just change one of the layouts to make it easy. Uh, we'll change the industrial workbench and make it quarter. Same message, because we don't have a current one that will be overriding it, it needs to create a new one. It goes into our overwrite, not into our document. Press OK. Now, it, you saw it flash for just a second there. It's now saving it. Once you've made all your changes, I want you to go ahead and close the Star UI configurator. If we go ahead and refresh it, you can see overwrite has turned red, and inside of overwrite, You'll have interface, star UI HUD, star UI inventory, and star UI workbench. These are all new any files that the configurator generated once you finish making your changes. Go ahead and close that for now. And you've got a couple choices. What do you do with this? You can leave it in your overwrite. Bad idea. It's basically making changes to your interface. We don't want to leave anything in our overwrite. We could take the whole thing and drag it back into the configurator. Well, that's not the best idea either, because if there are changes to the configurator and you download the mod and then reinstall it, it may overwrite all those changes that you made. But I think there's a better way. So inside your overwrite, you have the interface mods. Go ahead and right click on it and create a new mod. And we're going to call this star UI config output testing, because that is the profile that this is associated with, and you press OK. Now you have a brand new mod, and inside of it, you have those interface files. Close that down. I would suggest acting about it and put it right below the Star UI Configurator. If you get a new version of Star UI Configurator and you install it, it's not going to overwrite your existing modifications. It's unlikely that he'll add any new features for changing new things at this point because he's now onto his third version. But you never know, and you may not want to lose your outputs. So if you change over to your playthrough, you'll know that the Star UI configuration is for a different profile. So it's just one way of doing it. I'm going to go back to testing. I can see we have it everything lined up, but I think that's probably the best way of doing it. There's more than one way to skin a cat in Mod Organizer 2. I think this is probably the best way so you don't lose your settings accidentally and forget what you're doing. You can just go back through and redo it. If we were to run the star UI configurator again, and we go back to the HUD and look at the Ludometer, it's now read the .ini files and say, yeah, your current settings are enable Ludometer off. That was the one thing we changed in the star UI HUD. So it's reading the .ini files and corresponding it with in the configurator with what you currently have. And that's really nice. Those are just my thoughts on how best to do this, but I think in Mod Organizer, it works just fine. There's not much else to show you. It's gonna be a lot of play testing in your part and kind of figuring out the best way of doing your own thing. But take your time, go through each of the categories, pick which ones you want, set up a testing profile, so you can go in and look at different things without affecting your main playthrough and just play with it and then come up with your own system as you learn what you need to do and then just rerun the configurator each time you want to make a new change and just overwrite the new .ini files inside of that mod. The Star UI configurator is a great mod to go with a great series of mods for Starfield. I will have more modding videos coming out in the future, so please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. My name's Cal, I'm from Dirty Weasel, and I'm signing off.